if I have ten dollars and it increases to twenty dollars, I want you to calculate the percentage increase. Calculate the percentage increase. I'll give you a hint in a minute. Jump in there. Let's see if you got it. Okay, we got answers already. Well done. All right. Excellent. So A, I got an answer, correct answer. So let's go to the next one. Twenty dollars decreases to ten dollars. Well done, if I'm that's right. Calculate. The percentage decrease. Excellent, if I'm, that's also correct. Tuck your answers in if you get them and you're ready. Okay, cool. Can I show you a quick formula here? I'll put the formula on this side. If you take your last value, where L stands for last, and you minus your first value, where X stands for first. So this is your last value, and that's your first value. And you minus it, and then you divide it by the first value, and then multiply it by 100, it'll come to a certain percentage. And this one as well, this is your last value, this is your first value. So using that from there, that formula, my last value is 20, my first value is 10, and I divide it by the first value, which is 10. I'm multiplying this by 100 over 1. 10 goes into 100 10 times. 20 minus 10 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. So the answer for this one is 100%. The last value here is 10 now. The first value is 20. Divide by 20, which is the first value. Then multiply it by 100. So 20 goes into 100 five times. So this will equal, now 10 minus 20 is negative 10. Negative 10 times 5 would give you negative 50 percent. And the negative means that it's a decrease. So this is a decrease of 50 percent. All right, we're going to try another one. Let's try another one, right? I'm going to change this number, this number, this number, and that number. And it's supposed to be dollars. I'm going to say I've got now 20, but I'm increasing it to 30. And if I've got 30 and it decreases to 20, what will each of these percentages be? Use the formula. See if you can substitute it carefully in, like I did, and then multiply it by 100. Stop your answer in when you get it. So let's substitute it into the formula now. So the first thing we got here is the last value is 30. Minus my first value, which is 20. Divided by the first value, which is 20. Multiplied by 100 over 1. 20 goes into 100 five times. And 30 minus 20 is 10. 10 times 5 is 50. So this one here is a 50% increase. Next one. 20 is my last number. My first number is 30. And then if I divide it by the first number, which is 30, it becomes negative 10. 
but I'm multiplying this by 100 as well. Over 1. So that's going to cancel out there. 20 minus 30 is actually negative 10. So this is actually going to be negative 10 times 10, which is negative 100, divided by 3, which is minus, which is a reduction of 33%. All right, so it's reducing decrease is going to be 33% decrease for this one. Increase is going to be 50% increase for that one. All right, let's move on to today now. What I want to focus on to start off today is some gradients. How many of you know what a gradient is? Type yes. Gradients. Another word for a gradient is the slope. Slope of the line. The formula for gradient is change in y over change in x. So let's suppose I've got two points. All right, that's okay. So if I've got x1 over here and y1 over here, and it goes to x2 over here and y2 over here, then the gradient is going to be the, it's known as the change in y over change in x. We basically take y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1, divided by x2 minus x1. Let's look at an example. Let's suppose this point over here is given to me as 4, 6. And this point over here is given to me as 8, 10. If I want to find the gradient of this, remember 10 is going to go into y2 and 6 is going to go into y1. Right? So 10 minus 6. And we always keep the y values at the top. So the y values stay at the top and the x values stay at the bottom. And we call this triangle change. So it's change in y over change in x, basically. But I'll show you that in a bit. So 10 minus 6 over... Now, because I've started here, I've got to go 8 minus 4 in that order. So starting here and then ending there. That comes to... 10 minus 6 comes to 4. And 8 minus 4 comes to 4. So that's equal to 1. In total. So the gradient of this, the slope of this is given a value and the value is 1. Okay. Let's look at another example. I'm going to give you a line. I'm going to give you two coordinates. Now write down the formula here. We always use, we also use m from the line y equals mx plus c because that number in front of x in a straight line equation is your gradient. And that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here I've got a point over here. Let's say this is 9 and 7. I've got another one here, which is, let's keep it, let's make it negative. Negative 2, negative 3. So what I want to do now is substitute this in here. Let's start labeling it. You can choose either one to be x1 and y1. I'm going to choose the bottom one to be x1, y1. And that will be those values over here. Top one is going to be x2, y2. And that's going to be those values over there. So when I substitute it in, I take y2 minus y1. 7 minus... But now I've got a negative and another negative. So that's going to become positive. So 7 plus 3 becomes 10 at the top. Now we go 9 minus minus 2. 
9 minus times 2. 9 minus minus 2 will be 9 plus 2, which is 11. So the gradient for this is 10 over 11. And the most important thing here is to just have a look at that. It's sine, say. But now you know. So well done for trying. All right, let's look at another one now. Um, or maybe you can try one. Let's try one. You try one. And then we move on to a negative gradient. So here's a line. Here's the coordinate, 4 and 8. And here's another coordinate at the bottom, 2 and 6. The equation or the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where m is from the straight line equation, y equals mx plus c. That's the number we put in front of x. All right, go ahead, type your answers in. I'll give you a second. If you've got your answers already, well done. All right, let's go through this one now. So I'm going to choose the bottom one to be x1, y1, and the top one to be x2, y2. Some really good answers there. So I got 8, which is there, minus 6, over 4, minus 2. And that's where we started from. That comes to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So my gradient is equal to 1. Okay, well done. Let's try one with negative values now. Let's see if you can get this. I got negative 3 and negative 6. And 7 and 9. And the gradient is given as y2 minus y1 divided by 2 minus x1. Try it and then I'll go through it. All right, let's go through it. So, y2, y1, 9 minus, minus 6, x2, x1, 7 minus, minus 3, 9 minus, minus 6 is plus, so it's 15. 7 minus minus 3 is plus, so it's 10. That comes to 15 over 10, or 1.5, or you could simplify it by dividing by 5, 3 over 2. All right, let's go into the next one now. Well done on those answers. You guys got that. Let's have a look at one that's going this way. And let's see what happens to the number. What do you think will happen to the number? When we work it out, the final answer for the gradient. I'm going to call this A as well. Negative 7 and 4. And I'm going to call this B. 9 and negative 8. And the gradient AB is equal to YB minus YA over XB minus xa and notice i've changed it now into b's and a's because now you can actually see this is going to be xa y this is xb yb you don't have to do that but so yb is going to be negative 8 minus 4 start there minus there start there now minus there 9 minus minus 7. Minus 8 minus 4 on a number line, don't forget, if you're negative 8 and you go back 4 spaces, you're going to end up at negative 12. Remember? So that's going to be negative 12 over 16. Negative 12 divided by 4 is 3. 
1916 waren wir groß vor. So the gradient for this is going to be negative 3 over 4. And you notice the value is negative. All lines that go this way end up with a negative gradient. All lines that go this way end up with a positive gradient. All right. All right, cool. Let's jump into this one. Here's the line. Here's a value, negative 2 and 4. And here's another value, 8 and negative 10. This is the point A. And this is the point B. Let's see if you can find the gradient using yb minus ya over xb minus xb. Try it. When you're done, I'll go through it. All right, let's go through this one now. So yb is going to be negative 10. And YA is 4. XB is going to be 8. And XA is negative 2. Then we get negative 10 minus 4 is negative 14. And 8 minus minus 2 is 8 plus 2, which is 10. So it gets me negative 7 over 5. And that will be the answer. Well done, I got some really good answers coming through there. That's super cool. All right, let's go to the next one now. I'm going to give you three lines, or actually two lines. Or let's make it three lines. Three lines like that. All right, and what I got here. is the coordinate negative 2 and 4 and the coordinate here 7 and 3 negative 1 and 11 4 and negative 8 3 and 4 7 and negative 2 This one here should be eight, seven and eight, not not um, four. Sorry, just double check that first one there. That should be seven and eight at the top. Seven and eight. Okay, I'm going to call those A, B, A, B, A, B, and A, B. This one is question A, question B, and then question C. See if you can get each of those gradients. Try it when you're done. I'll go through it. Alrighty, well done. Some answers coming through. I'm going to give you the solutions over here now. I'm going to call it M. The gradient here is going to be 8 minus 4 over 7 minus minus 2. You could go the other way 4 minus 8 over 2 minus minus 7. It should work out. This gets you to 4 over 9. Alright, so that's your answer for A. The answer for B, you could go from the top down or bottom up. Let's say you go bottom up, minus 8 minus 11, divided by 4 minus, minus 1. Gets you negative 19 over 5. Well done, that's some correct answers coming through there. All right. And yeah, you want to type your answers in? I'll give you a second. Type your answers in. All right, and the last one here, M equals negative 2 minus 4 over 
7.93, which is negative 6 over 4. Yeah, negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2. So yeah, well done. That was super. Now, remember, gradients is also, if you look carefully, it's also the change in y over change in x. So the concept of a gradient comes from the fact that you have some kind of change in y over change in x. So let's say, for example, I've got the following idea. So I said, Gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the formula. Because we did we subtracting the y's, we're finding the change in y. And because we're subtracting the x's, we are finding the change in x. Another way to write change is to use this triangle which also means the same thing, change in y over change in x, or the rate of change of y with respect to x. Anyway, if I've got a coordinate plane like this, sketched quickly, so if I've got y here and I've got x here, and I've got a point here that's 1 and 2, let's say, that means that this value is 1 and this value is 2. And this goes up till here and becomes 4 and 6. Okay? So, in order to calculate this, we have our movements. If I have to move from here, this here is, by the way, this coordinate is 4, 6. This movement here is my change in x. And that movement there is my change in y. Another way of writing this is known as rise over run. Because when you rise, you go vertically. And when you run, you go horizontally. Now, if I look at it, what is my change from 2 to 6? It's 4. So this is equal to 4. What is my change from 1 to 4? It's 3. And I know that if I substitute it into this formula, it's going to become 6 minus 2 over 4 minus 1. And that's how I got 4. 6 minus 2 is 4. And 4 minus 1 is 3. So the gradient is 4 over 3. Right, 4 thirds, basically. So that's what change in my change mm -hmm. next is. And you can find gradients using graphs like this as well. Okay, I'm now going to put an activity. I want you to try and find the gradients. And we'll continue in a bit. Go into the chat. Look for the link. It will come through in the next minute. Okay. The link should be in the assignment otherwise. All right, so the next thing I want to go through is known as the distance formula. All right, it's called distance formula. It basically shows us the length of the line between two points. So the distance formula is calculated on the foundation of having two points. And it looks like this. So if you're back on the shared page, just let me know, just type back, I'm back, or I'm here. I'm going to call this B, X, B, Y, B. And I'm going to call this one A, X, A, Y, A, again. Thanks, guys. And Y, A. Now, from here, the distance formula is calculated like this. AB, which is the length of the line, is given by the square root of the 
difference between the x values, so xd minus xa squared, plus the difference between the y values, so yb minus ya plus the squared. And this concept is developed by the following. So if I go this way here, you can see that's going to be the change in x, and that's a change in y again. So this over here will be my xd minus xa. And over here, this one here is yb minus yA. Now, if you look carefully at this, this is actually Pythagoras theorem. Because if I had to call this A, B, and C, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And you can see A is X minus XB minus XA, and B is that there. So this is like the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that's equal to c. Okay, and that's known as a distance formula. Let's have a look at an example. Let's suppose I got another line with two points, and given that the point a is 3 and 7, and the point B is 9 and 15. The length AB is going to be given by the square root of XB minus XA squared plus YB minus YA squared. And so when I substitute it into this formula, my xb is 15. Probably need a calculator, so I'll just keep it handy. And yb, so, oh, can you see I substituted yb and ya, which is that there. That's fine. You can substitute that first as well. All right, but I'll just substitute x a for a minute. 9 minus 3 squared. And then yb minus yA. Okay. Fifteen minus 7. Squared. That comes to 6 squared, which is 36. And that comes to 8 squared, which is... 64 because 15 minus 7 is 8. And that's actually a nice number. That's 100. So AB is going to be a nice number 10. And we don't have any units, so just write units. 10 units. That's the length of this line. 10 units long. If we leave our answer with the root, it's called third form. So if we got to an answer that doesn't square root, then we call it third form. Okay. Keeping this in mind now, I'm just going to bring it all up into one corner. Keeping this in mind, see if you can find the length of this line. A. One and eight, nine and twenty. Go ahead, see if you can find it. When you're done, I'll go through. All right, let's go through it now. So the first thing I can see is that if I put it into the formula, I see you guys are getting the answer fourteen point four two. Let's have a look. So we got AB is equal to 
square root of xb, which is 9, minus xa, which is 1, whole squared, plus 20 minus 8, whole squared. That comes to 8 squared, which is 64. That comes to 12 squared, which is 144. Now, there's something called third form and simplified third form. I'm going to put 64 plus 144 and see what I get. 64 plus 144 comes to 208. So AB is equal to the square root of 208. Now, this is known as third form. Sometimes in an exam, they want you to leave it like this. And they'll tell you, leave your answer in third form. Then you leave it like that. But if they ask you to round it off to, let's say, three significant figures, then you put it in the calculator and you round it, it becomes 14.4. Just a quick tip. Whenever you have to simplify a third, you can change this into a number like 4. Let's say 218 divided by a perfect square it comes to 52. So 4 times 52, and I can actually divide 52 by 4. So I actually can divide this number by 16, which is another perfect square. I'm dividing 208 by a perfect square. So let's say divided by 16, it's 13. So this is this can be rewritten as 16 times 13. When I take 16 outside of the root, it becomes 4. Because when it goes inside, it gets squared. So I'm, I'm square rooting it on the way out. And then on the inside, I'm left with the root 13. And this is known as simplified third form. Simplified third form. All right, there will be another exercise maybe on that. I'm going to produce another activity now, and let's see if you can find distance of a line. So distance line. If you go into the Assignment, you should find some links over there. All right, let's move on to the last formula, which is the midpoint of the line. Go on to the share page again, and let's have a look at the midpoint formula. It's the last formula, the midpoint of a line. So let's say I got two coordinates of here. I got coordinate number two and four. And I've got a coordinate here which is eight and fourteen. And I want to find out if I want the exact coordinate of the midpoint of the two, what exactly will it be? So I want to find the exact coordinate of the midpoint of the two, what exactly will it be? All right, so let's have a look at that. So the first thing I'm going to put up is the formula. And the formula looks like this. So it's x1 plus x2 divided by 2. That's going to be the first coordinate of the earth. The second coordinate is going to be y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So let's go ahead and label each of these x1, y1, x2, y2. So to find the midpoint of these two, I'm going to take x1 plus x2 divided by 2. y1 
plus y2 divided by 2. 2 plus 8 gets you 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 4 plus 14 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And so that will be the coordinate 5, 9. All right, keeping that in mind, I'll leave it on the side here. Let's see if you can find the midpoint of this line. See if you can get me the coordinate of the midpoint for this line. Try it. I'll go through it in a bit in more than enough time. Let's go through this one now. So here we go. I'm going to add up these two values, the x values. So 14 plus 8 will go in there. 14 plus 8 divided 2. Then 26 plus 10 divided 2 there. So the midpoint comes to 14 plus 8, remember, is 22 divided by 2 is 11. 26 plus 10 is 36 divided by 2 is 18. So the final answer for the midpoint here would be 11, 18. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and give you a single line. You're going to find three things. You're going to find the length of the line, you're going to find the gradient of the line, and you're going to find the midpoint of the line. Okay? So I want you to find the gradient of the line. Question one. Question two, I want you to find the length of the line. And question three, the midpoint of the line. So here we go. This is uh, two and feet. We go up for 16 and 20. And this is point A and this is point B. And the point in the middle is called M. Get me the length of AB, the midpoint of AB, and the gradient of AB. Try it, give it a go, and when you're done, I'll go through it. All right, let's go through this one now. The gradient of this is going to be 20 minus 8 over 16 minus 2, which is 12 over 14, which is actually 6 over 7, 20 minus 8 is 12, and 16 minus 2 is 14, so 6 over 7. The length of this is given by the square root of that distance, so 12 squared plus 14 squared, that's that part, and that's that part, square rooted. On the calculator, 18.43, and the midpoint of this is given as 16 plus 2 over 2, 20 plus 8 over 2, and it comes to 18 over 2, which is 9. And 28 over 2 is 14. So 9, 14 becomes the midpoint. And those are all of that done there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just double check your assignment has everything in it. And that's it for today, guys. If you're ready to leave, you can. Have a good week, and I'll catch you guys next week. All right. Thank you, guys.